Greetings and salutations everyone. My name is Andrew Kirchhoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Fantasy Football Week 15 quarterback rankings. So for today's episode we're going to be going over uh, the matchups at the quarterback position, uh, who, talking about who has got the best and worst matchups going into the week. Uh, and then after that we're going to go over my 1-18 through 18 quarterback rankings, the rankings and a lot of the coverage will not be going over the Thursday night game and the participants of that game. I already mentioned, um, you know, my thoughts on the game yesterday. So my rankings and the matchups will not be including Patrick Mahomes or uh, Philip Rivers for this week. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, and let's let's get right into it, shall we? Hey, everybody, how's it going? All right. So before we begin, I just wanted to uh, ask you guys for a huge favor. All right. This is all that I want, okay? All I want for Christmas is to eventually get to, hopefully, 5,000 subscribers for the YouTube channel. Now, I'm going to pull up my YouTube. Let's see. What are we at exactly at this very moment as I record this video on Thursday, okay? We're at 4,670 subscribers. Now, that's 4,660 <laughs> 4, more subscribers than I thought I'd ever have. But if we could somehow, in the next couple weeks... Get this number close to competing range with, you know, 5,000. I will go ahead. I'll sit down all day. I'll make 100 Google accounts and I'll subscribe to my channel and I'll get us there. But either way, I just wanted to thank all of you guys who have already subscribed to this YouTube channel. If you haven't already, click that sub button. But I want to try to get to 5,000. We're at 4,670 um, and we can get there. I, I believe it in my heart of hearts. Just tell a friend, tell a family member. Let's let's subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let me let's get me to five five thousand. That's all I want for Christmas this year. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the rankings at the quarterback. No, we're not talking about the rankings yet. Let's talk about the matchups first. Okay, Andrew, don't get ahead of yourself. All right. So who has the best matchup going into Week 15? Technically, when it comes to points given up to the quarterback position on a weekly basis, as of right now, it is. The Atlanta Falcons giving up the most points. Now, is Josh Rosen going to be able to take advantage of that? I highly doubt it. Josh Rosen hasn't been great in the last couple weeks, um, especially this past week against the Lions. They shot him down, and I think he's going to be able to, I mean, with the weapons that surround him and the situation that he's currently in, I don't see it as a um, as a product of success. They're not going to be able to really produce much. So I would go ahead and lean on the side of Josh Rosen. Probably not a great play this week. Uh, even with this matchup at hand, I mean, there's just really other than David Johnson, who's been struggling as of late, who has been hurt, uh, like I mentioned yesterday, uh, and Larry Fitzgerald, who's you know at the back end of his career, um, there really isn't much else on that offense. So anyway, moving on to number two, we have the Cincinnati Bengals giving up the second most points to the quarterback position in six point per passing touchdown uh, league formats. All right, they play against the Raiders this week. Now there is a potential that Derek Carr, you know, who has looked good in the last couple weeks could potentially step up and have himself a good fantasy week here. But the question is, can you, in your fantasy playoffs, trust Derek uh, Derek Carr? I mean, from from the outside looking in, uh, for someone that doesn't really have to um, go down into the well and go into that waiver wire in order to pick up a player like Derek Carr, I think that you probably shouldn't. I'd way rather play guys like Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen this week, uh, Dak Prescott, Marcus Mariota, but guys like Derek Carr, it's just, even with the matchup, it's very difficult to convince me because I know for a fact, we've seen it thus far this season many times where Derek Carr will just not be able to produce and it's always, he's, it's very capable of occurring in any possible week. Uh, despite having a good performance against the Steelers defense this past week, I'm still a little bit skeptical on giving him the full, you know, you can go ahead and start him if you're really struggling. Um, but it always, it's it's... It's always going to be um, subjective, right? You all have different, you know, w leagues, and you have different s scenarios and situations. So it obviously depends on that specific scenario or situation. But as of right now, uh, Derek Carr, eh, let's let's not let's not stay too close to him. Moving on to number three, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers giving up a bunch of points. Lamar Jackson, if he's healthy, should be, have a great week. Okay, he's going to be able to move the ball with his legs. Hopefully, we can see him throw the ball some deep plays here and there. Um, that's exactly where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have struggled. But here's the thing. The Buccaneers defense in the last two weeks playing against uh, some better offenses. You know, they, they played against the Carolina Panthers and they played against the um, the Saints this past week. They, they haven't looked terrible, 
right? They've looked decent. You know, even though they lost against the Saints, but they, they let up 28 points, that's going to happen. If Lamar Jackson begins to struggle, there could be an issue there. But either way, I think Lamar Jackson should have a good week because of his availability to run the ball and pick up fantasy points with that. Anyway, moving on to number four, the Saints giving up a bunch of points to the quarterback position. Now it's up to Cam Newton. I mean, many of us who have Cam Newton, we've relied upon him all season long, and we're hoping, okay, yes, you haven't played well in the last two weeks. We've barely gotten by with you. Can we trust you again against the defense that's only giving up 13.5 points in the past five weeks? You know, when a defense is playing that well and a quarterback is already, you know, on a five-game losing streak, has not played well, has been turning over the ball, has a shoulder injury, can we trust that? My rankings will pretty much answer that question, but I'm going to lean towards he's a middle-of-the-pack kind of uh, quarterback this week. I understand that he's got a lot of value with his legs, but um, I think he, he's probably sitting around like the 8 through 10 range. Like you could probably, not probably like 10, uh, it, it's it's tough because honestly, Cam Newton is a kind of guy that can come out and just sling it and have a couple good touchdowns here and there, run one in, and he's, he's done. He's, he's already scored 25 fantasy points. So it's kind of hard to kind of sit that kind of a player, um, especially in your playoffs, into a somewhat decent matchup. But uh, taking all those things into account, we'll talk about it when I get to my rankings. But still, uh, that's not a bad matchup, speaking of matchups. All right, Kansas City Chiefs, we're going we're gonna to skip that because that game is currently going on as I speak. The Raiders, okay, we're not playing Jeff Driscoll. Please do not do that. Um, the San Francisco 49ers. Russell Wilson should be a great play. The last time that Russell Wilson played against the 49ers, in fact, um, if I'm not mistaken, had about four touchdowns on 11 passing completions. Yeah, he had 32 points two weeks ago in which he scored four passing touchdowns. Um, and I expect him to do something close to the same. Uh, he should be good this week. Moving on, the Carolina Panthers giving up a bunch of points. But here's the thing. For those of you who own Drew Brees, you know for a fact he has not looked good in the last two weeks. Uh, in the last two weeks, in six point per passing touchdown league formats, he has a total of uh, what, 24 total points in fantasy. In the last two weeks, yeah, you would expect that in a singular week, 24 points. But in the last two weeks, he put up nine and 15 fantasy points. Um, to be honest, Drew Brees, he's been struggling as of late. They've been continuing to run the ball a little bit more and more. But due to the great matchup, I think he's going to be a little bit better this week. He's got a good matchup, and I think. Um, He'll, he'll get back to form, hopefully, uh, for many of us who are relying upon him. All right, moving on to, uh, what do we have? The New England Patriots. Great. Ben Roethlisberger practiced today, uh, even with James Conner out, potentially, because there was a report that came out today saying um, he does not have to play in order for us to, or he does not have to practice in order for us to play him. We still have confidence that he understands the playbook and he can come in at any time. He's performed all season long. We, we owe him that much, blah, blah, blah. Uh, ben Roethlisberger, yes, he had an injury to his ribs. He practiced today. He should be a full go. Uh, he should be a, a top-end quarterback. On the other side of that argument, we have the Steelers giving up the 10th most points to the quarterback position. And, in fact, you know Tom Brady, on the other side of that, uh, had a pretty had his best week of the entire season last week. Okay, uh, And that's saying a lot because we know for a fact, I mentioned it last week, the Dolphins were going to give them troubles. They did in the end. They had the last laugh, but uh, Brady looked good in the passing game. Uh, he was able to get all of his pieces involved, except for James White. But you know that happens either way. Um, you know Brady and Roethlisberger, they've had pretty good shootouts in the last couple of years. Uh, the last two seasons that the Patriots have played against the Steelers, um, Brady's had average games. He's had one game where he threw for a touchdown, and one game he threw for two touchdowns. Um, but nothing too amazing since 2015, in which he threw four touchdowns. So. That being said, he should be good this week. It should be a good matchup between the two. Moving on, the Dolphins giving up the 11th most points to the quarterback position. We saw uh, you know, Tom Brady this past week be pretty successful. Now, I'm hoping with the firing of John DeFilippo uh, De of the Minnesota Vikings, there is an opportunity that Kirk Cousins and this offense can be reborn. They can take a step back, look at it from a macro perspective, and understand, okay, this is what we need to do in order to be successful we need to be able to at least protect Kirk Cousins for at least three seconds in order to get the ball out of his hands. And we need to continue to feed Dalvin Cook, um, Stephon Diggs, and Adam Thielen consistently. And the defense has to step up. As of right now, 
Um, hopefully this matchup is juicy enough for Kirk Cousins to succeed, and I think he will be able to. Uh, moving on, the, the Eagles giving up a bunch of points. And this is as a let. You know, the Eagles, their secondary is not looking great. Jared Goff is not looking great. Um, and as of right now, from the current point of view from my side, I think Jared Goff is going to have a good week. But the question is, can we trust him going into this week? Now, that's not a question we were asking ourselves many weeks back. We were The only thing we were asking was, is you know Todd Gurley going to steal the per, you know respective touchdown near the goal line, right? Because that continued to happen and that continued to take value away from Goff. Now the the question we ask ourselves here is, can he even complete a touchdown pass? Because we haven't seen him play great football in the last two weeks, and potentially the Eagles could come in and cause some trouble. But either way, we'll go over that later. The Redskins playing against. Don't worry about it. Josh Johnson is going to be the starting quarterback. Oh no, it's Cody Kessler. Versus Josh Johnson. I don't want any pieces of that game, to be honest. Uh, the Rams giving up a bunch of points to the quarterback position. It's probably going to be Nick Foles, by the way. So for those of you playing in a super deep league, Nick Foles might not be a terrible play, but uh, I'm not sure about putting him against guys like uh, Sue and Aaron Donald off of a, a pretty long vacation. What is it? He's been out for like 10 weeks now on vacation, sitting as the second string quarterback. Moving on, the Lions giving up a bunch of points. Josh Allen will have a good week. Hopefully he'll run for another 100 yards. I doubt that because... Teams are going to be able to pick up on that. They're going to put a QB spy. This kid's going to get hit one of these times. I understand he's, he's hurdled Anthony Barr so far this season, but um, teams are going to pick up on him trying to run the ball so often. Uh, moving on, the Jets giving up a bunch of points. Deshaun Watson should be good on that Saturday game. The Packers, the Cleveland Browns, the Broncos, Colts, Texans, Giants, everybody's giving up a decent amount of points here and there. Um, specifically, is there anything that kind of stands out that I think can be taken advantage of. I'm thinking, just looking at these matchups, there's not really much, to be honest. Um, potentially, I don't know, the, the Browns versus the Cleveland, um, yeah, the Browns versus the Broncos matchup, is that going to have Baker Mayfield be you know somewhat successful? I don't know. Baker Mayfield has not looked good in the last two weeks. Uh, in fact, he's just, he's just not being able to produce. Even though it's been good matchups, uh, perspectively, it's just they, they haven't been able to click together, and they're, they're going to run the ball. You know, we know that Nick Chubb is going to continuously get carries, so I don't know if Baker Mayfield's as reliable in this kind of a week. Uh, let's talk about the tougher matchups on hand. We have the Dallas Cowboys. Even with that, I, I still trust in Andrew Luck. The Seahawks playing against Nick Mullins, who threw four, for 400 yards last time they played each other. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens, they're going to give Jameis Winston some trouble. Uh, Tennessee Titans. They play tough against the quarterback. In fact, they play tough against the running back and tight end as well. The only thing that they suck at is stopping the wide receivers. Um, and I'm telling you, they're going to stack the box, and they're going to give Saquon some trouble, but we'll see how that affects uh, that offense. Maybe Saquon's just completely immune to everything, even with like stacked boxes of eight people. Uh, moving on, the Jaguars, the Chargers, uh, the Vikings, the Cardinals, the Bears, and the Bills. Um, as of right now, Matthew Stafford has not looked good. I am honestly considering playing the Bills defense this week because if Matthew Stafford in the last three weeks has only put up a total, a total of six, sorry, 20 fantasy points in the last three weeks in a six point per passing touchdown format, why wouldn't I just get after him? In in two of those weeks, he had five or le- lower points or less points, excuse me. Um, to be honest, Matthew Stafford hasn't looked good. And the Bills, who are giving up the least points to the quarterback position, I do not mind getting after Matthew Stafford. Um, with that defense all right anyway that's the matchups section portion of this video let's move on let's talk about my rankings at the quarterback position as i mentioned before uh down below right here we have patrick mahomes and philip rivers who will not be included in this video because they're currently playing right now and there's no point for me to rank them because by the time you guys see this video it would already be too late so i'm not going to rank them so either way um but they should have both been starting this this week in my opinion it's a pretty good matchup. It's going to be a shootout. We know Patrick Mahomes is going to come out and he's going to try to score as many points at home as possible. And Philip Rivers is just going to have to keep up and probably he will be able to. But um, either way, they should probably both be starts. Probably they would have been uh, Patrick Mahomes probably would have been number one for me this week and potentially Philip Rivers would have been in the top 10 somewhere. Probably like before Cam. Let's put it that way. He probably would have been number eight. Either way, let's go ahead and move on. And let's talk about Drew Brees as my number one quarterback this week. Um, it's pretty simple. I honestly believe Drew Brees is going to get back on track this week. 
even though he has not looked great in the last couple weeks, if you own Drew Brees, this is the way, I mean, you have to start him. It's plain and simple. And that goes for a lot of these quarterbacks. If they are on your roster and they've gotten you this far, um, it's not about, oh, the, the common courtesy is you, you start him because he got him here. No, no, no. It is the, just logically speaking, you should probably start Drew Brees over guys like Mitchell Trubisky or Matt Ryan or Josh Allen. Why? Because we know for a fact he is a better quarterback. He is more consistent than those guys. And yes, okay, he hasn't looked good as of late, but he's got a good matchup. It's a matchup within the division. And I honestly believe Drew Brees, I mean, last it's last season, when they played against the Carolina Panthers twice, he tore them apart. Should be able to do the same this week. All right, moving on to number two, Ben Roethlisberger. I understand he was injured last week. That made a big difference on how many fantasy points he scored, yet he was still able to be productive uh, coming into this week at home against the pa- uh, Patriots. It's going to be a good game, and I think it's going to be a back-and-forth shootout. Without James Conner, he's going to have to throw the ball more. It's going to be able to uh, bring him in a little bit more production um, in the passing game and fantasy-wise. So he's my number two quarterback this week. Number three, Andrew Luck, as I mentioned. Despite the difficult matchup, difficult matchup against the Cowboys, I still expect Andrew Luck to be successful um, and find his way. He should have a good week, and he's my number three. Number four, we have Jared Goff. Now, as I mentioned before, it is difficult for many of us to consider playing Jared Goff after the last two performances we've seen from him. Um, To be honest, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking to myself, okay, can we trust Jared Goff um, this coming week? I think he's a riskier play than he has been in the past. Because we know Todd Gurley is going to run the ball all over the Eagles. We saw Ezekiel Elliott twice in the last three weeks completely destroy the uh, the Eagles defense, right? And we know that they're now susceptible to the running game. They've been getting beat up up front. Even though that defensive line is good pass rush-wise, they're stopping the run. They haven't been able to do anything. So as of right now, we know Todd Gurley is going to be great. Now, does that translate to Jared Goff? being able to get his touchdown value, being able to be fantasy relevant. It's a very risky play. I have him at number four because of how bad that secondary is for that team. I think if Jared Goff is to ever have a comeback week here in order to set everything straight, in order to get him back on track, this is the week. It's an easier matchup. It's a home game against a very weak secondary. I believe Jared Goff at number four. Yes, it's a risky play, um, but I still I have, I have my confidence in him. Moving on to five, we have Tom Brady. The other half of the Ben Roethlisberger matchup, I expect him to be able to, after the, the last week's game where he had, what, 30 fantasy points in six-point per passing touchdown formats, the running game wasn't there. And I expect the Pittsburgh Steelers to be able to do the exact same thing the Dolphins did, take away the running game, score points, force Tom Brady to pass the ball, which is exactly what fantasy owners need him to be at. We need him to have a sense of urgency. They need to be down in the game in order to have them continuously passing the ball and scoring fantasy points. Therefore, he is my number five this week into a pretty good matchup and a good game. Moving on to number six, Russell Wilson that I mentioned before, playing against uh, the 49ers. It's going to be a one-sided matchup. I expect Russell Wilson to continuously just keep scoring. And be fan. I mean, what, the last time they played against them, they had 40-some-odd points. Um, And to be honest, we've seen it, okay? The 49ers, they come out, they have a lot of heart. We saw George Kittle ball out last week. We've seen um, Nick Mullins, even though he is, you know, undrafted free agent rookie, uh, come in and play pretty decently in the last couple weeks. You know, since he's taken over the um, the reins of the starting quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers, we know that team's going to come out and they're going to try hard. Now, there is a chance that Russell Wilson has to continue to compete because they continue to score fantasy points or uh, total points on the other side. That'll make it even better. That'll force Russell Wilson to even score more fantasy points for you. Uh, I think the matchup is fantastic, and I think he's going to have a great game. He's number six. Number seven, Deshaun Watson. It's, I mean, honestly, it's hard to uh, be able to say that he's not going to score a bunch on the Jets' defense. On the Jets' defense, people. Okay, the Jets have been struggling. I mean, they are one of the worst teams in the NFL right now. And to be honest, they give up a bunch of points um, to the wide receiver position. And specifically, often, I mean, defensively, they haven't been able to stop anybody in a while, right? They had Josh Allen run for 100 yards on them. I'm sure Deshaun Watson will be able to do the same. Or he's not going to run for 100 yards because he has an arm. Okay, He's going to be able to accurately throw the ball downfield. I have DeAndre Hopkins as my number one receiver. I expect Deshaun Watson on Saturday night to have a great week. 
Uh, he's my number seven. And we're moving on to number eight. Okay, like I mentioned before, I had Cam Newton at around eight to ten range. Um, if Patrick Mahomes and Philip Rivers were still in, included in this ranking, he would be about ten. Okay, I would have had both of them above him. He would have moved down to the number ten slot, and that's where I have you know comfort with Cam Newton as a as a top ten quarterback. Sure, but he is a lower end top ten quarterback due to the you know difficult. I would say difficult matchup as of right now. I understand the Saints are giving up a bunch of points to the quarterback position, but as of the last five weeks, they are only giving up 13.5 points per game. Cam Newton has not looked good. He continues to turn over the ball. And if, in fact, his shoulder is as messed up as we think it is, he could find himself in some trouble. But that all being said, Cam Newton is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Fantasy-wise, he is one of the best quarterbacks with the ability to run the ball and score fantasy points in bunches. I have, I have a good amount of confidence that, yes, if he is your best option, go for it. Because he is going to score points no matter what. They are playing for their, their season right now. Okay, After that five-game skid, they're playing for their season. I expect Cam Newton to come out and just try to put it all on the line. Uh, he's my number eight. Number nine, we have Lamar Jackson. Plays against the Tampa Bay defense. It's a very easy matchup. And as long as he stays healthy, he's going to score fantasy points. right? Whether it's with his legs or his arms. I expect Lamar Jackson to be good. Now, you may be thinking, really, Lamar Jackson over Kirk Cousins, Dak Prescott? Yes. Why? Because, to be honest, Lamar Jackson, um, he, he, can score some, he can score fantasy points. And against a bad defense, right, that's not going to be able to score much. I guarantee you, Jameis Winston's going to have trouble. What is that going to cause? Short field positioning um, or better field positioning, short fields to go down. And there's gonna, you know, there's gonna be opportunity for Lamar Jackson to step up and uh, completely win this job because Joe Flacco is healthy. He is the number two quarterback right now, and he's got to be able to prove to everybody that yes, I deserve this job and I'm taking it to the playoffs. Uh, Lamar Jackson, number nine, number ten. We have Kirk Cousins playing against the Miami Dolphins. Hopefully, the offense will look different. Hopefully, Kirk Cousins will throw the ball more accurately. Hopefully. They won't have to score garbage time touchdowns in the last minute. Now, many of us won fantasy weeks last week because of that touchdown pass to Dalvin Cook. But that being said, we want to see more production in the first three quarters, Kirk Cousins. Thank you. He's my number 10. Number 11, we have Dak Prescott, who's looked great in the last, what, six weeks? They've won six games in a row. Of course, he's looked great in all those games. Um, Even when he can't get it done with his arm, he's getting it done with his legs. And that, in fantasy, is that much more valuable. Therefore, he's my number 11 playing against the Colts this week. They have a tougher defense, but I expect this Dallas Cowboys offense coming off of a pretty uh, pretty big win this past week. A lot of momentum on their hands to go ahead, come into uh, this game. And Dak Prescott, man, I mean, he has been looking better and better as the weeks have gone by. Let me go ahead and find this. Where's Dak's stats? I'm just curious. i got to take a peek at these. All right, Dak, what have you done as of late? All right, in the last couple weeks, I'm going to read this stats, okay? In the last five weeks, okay? On their winning streak, he has scored 23.7, 14.8, 31.3, 16, and 30.4. Um, it's not bad, to be honest. A lot of productions. I mean, he threw the ball 54 times last week. He threw the ball 54 times last week. He's not he's not Andrew Luck, but he's throwing the ball 54 times in a game. Um, that gives me some confidence because if, in fact, Andrew Luck on the other side of the field is going to be able to score a bunch of points... This is going to have to force Dak Prescott to let it go. Uh, let it go. No, it doesn't matter. Um, and and pass the ball as much as he can. And uh, he should be able to find some fantasy value in doing so. He's my number 11. Number 12, we have Matt Ryan playing against the Cardinals. Easy matchup. I honestly believe it's a good matchup. Okay. That being said, Matt Ryan hasn't been very consistent. And neither has the Falcons. So there's obviously some cause for concern. But he is still a top 12 quarterback in my opinion. I think because of the fact that he has Julio out there, all right, and that offense has some talent, Calvin Ridley, Mohamed Sanu, he has a, he's a better option than some of these other guys, okay? Yes, it's a tougher matchup, but I'm telling you, because of how bad the Cardinals' offense is, it is going to award Matt Ryan some better field positioning, and he's going to find fantasy value. All right, number 13, Josh Allen. Wow. How the heck did Josh Allen get here? Let me tell you. The guy is running the ball better than any quarterback has, in uh, NFL history, three weeks in a row, he has over 320 rushing yards um, in all three weeks combined. He's been great, and he continues to find fantasy value. All he has to do is run the ball for 100 yards, throw one touchdown, boom, that's 16 points that no one can take away from you. 
Anything else is gravy, okay? And um, it's looking good as of late. He plays against the Lions defense. Could end up exploiting that defense and having a good game. He's number 13. And you, look at that. He's above Aaron Rodgers. Why? Because Aaron Rodgers at number 14 has to play against that Bears defense. And by all means, that Bears defense scared the crap out of me last week. They are looking scary. I mean, they're getting after it on a weekly basis, scoring a bunch of fantasy po- I mean, just stopping teams from scoring a bunch of fantasy points. Personally, that defense, if you own the Bears defense fantasy-wise, they are putting up a bunch of fantasy points. Okay, That can be some MVP-level stuff. That, that defense alone has carried you in weeks in which they score 15 points, 12 points, 10 points. That kind of stuff, that makes a difference in the long haul. Anyway, Aaron Rodgers, I understand it's a new offensive coordinator change. They're going to have trouble running the ball. And in turn, they're going to have trouble moving the ball. Uh, I expect Khalil Mack to get after him and uh, have a good week. So Aaron Rodgers, you're at number 14. Number 15, Mitch Trubisky, the other side of that matchup. I don't expect Trub to do anything. If Allen Robinson misses the game, it does not help him. I think they're going to have to dictate the game with running the ball as they've looked to do in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Mitch Trubisky did not look good this past week. And to be honest, it wasn't that difficult of a matchup. Um, Akeem Tlaib could have been taken advantage of. He wasn't able to, so he's my number 15. Number 16, Baker Mayfield playing against the Broncos. It's not a terrible matchup, but um, I don't see you know Baker walking in and having a perfect game. I don't see a three-touchdown kind of game. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I just watched Patrick Mahomes. Yes, I have the game in front of me. But I only just pulled it up. Patrick Mahomes just threw the ball right into the ground. Like, goodness gracious. Okay, I'm not looking at that anymore. Um, as of right now, Baker Mayfield going against the Broncos. It is a tougher matchup. Uh, the, the Broncos defense has been getting better. But the um, – and then you may be thinking, oh, but Nick Mullins threw for two touchdowns. Okay, great. One of them was an 85-yard George Kittle reception. Okay, Kittle did all the work. So, yes, Baker Mayfield could be good. But um, he's the lower-end quarterback – only if you're in a specific scenario or situation where you have to play him um, would I ever suggest them. Moving on to 17, we have Marcus Mariota playing against the Giants, okay? Now, I honestly believe that Mariota, yes, he's been quiet in the last couple of weeks, um, but we, we've seen him be productive. We can see, I mean, I can potentially see Marcus Mariota playing for his playoff live against the Giants pull out a good game. I honestly believe that he, he's capable of doing so. Now, will he be able to do it? I'm not sure. Let's just look at the last couple games that Marcus Mariota has played, okay? This past week against Jacksonville, obviously he didn't play well, right? Fantasy-wise, because Derrick Henry had literally every single touchdown that they scored. Now, the two weeks prior to that, 25.5 points against the Jets, in which he threw for two passing touchdowns, and the week prior to that against the Houston Texans, okay, he was 22 of 23 passing, 22 completions on 23 attempts. For 303 yards and two passing touchdowns. I mean, he, he's looked good in the last couple weeks. He can score fantasy points. He's looked better in the second half of the season in which he scored four games of 25 or more fantasy points and six point per passing touchdown formats. I think Marcus Mariota could even be better than guys like Baker Mayfield, maybe even Mitch Trubisky. Um, yes, it's a little bit of a tougher matchup against the Giants, but I expect him to be productive and have a great week. Number 18, Jameis Winston. have to mention him because you never know. Jameis can end up scoring a touchdown out of nowhere just by random chance. Um, and then you could also go ahead and throw three interceptions. But either way, I don't, I don't expect him to be replaced. Okay, That is a given. I don't expect him to be taken out for Ryan Fitzpatrick unless he gets hurt. Um, as of right now, I just, I'm not very convinced that he can throw it against the Ravens defense. So he's my number 18. And that's basically it, everybody. I want to thank everyone for watching. How long have we gone for about 29 minutes not bad all right so that's basically it thoughts as of right now anything else i want to talk about probably we'll mention tight ends within the next couple days probably tomorrow then i'll answer questions uh other than that let's try to get to 5,000 subscribers please thank you um other than that that's pretty much it i want to thank everybody for watching uh good luck on your games this weekend i will see you tomorrow and other than that it's pretty much it so i'll see you guys later peace